what is up guys and of course welcome to another Pokemon Wi-Fi battle with your true of course the Scarinder and just before starting off a bit of a laser video today and for that I'm sorry but at the same time we are going up against Titan Atlas or Richard in a very very nice uh, NU battle and looking to my opponent's team here just gonna say it as it is it's a pretty decent rain team I see all the signs you know Armaldo, Electrode which are incredible and we see Clang Clang here, which can be dangerous. Poor Loin instead of Lipod, um, which is extremely dangerous. Because if with the Violite, it is actually fairly bulky. It's a good setup, man. Uh, Lipod couldn't still be used as a rain setter, but I don't mind having uh, Poor Loin instead. Torterra, which of course benefits from the rain, and the Clang Clang is just a beast in the right environments. Uh, I myself am using a Stick Web team. As you guys see here, we have Primeape, Ariados, Rerion, Luxray, Golgeist, and Rompardos. Now, it is a real aggressive team, and I'm making dinner as I'm recording. So, yeah, obviously, I'm doing this really good. <laughs> anyway, sorry about that. Um, but, yeah, the team, my team I have is basically, it's more aggressive with Primate being, of course, a pivot here for U-turning. Uh, hit up something, it has beat up to make sure to take out uh, Focus Sash in the beginning if it was we'll set off. Or the others is there for Stick Web. Uh, being generally really, really wally. Uh, Flareon and Luxray function the same way. If the Mon is uh, slower, then they can break something apart. Gorgite solves the issue that Luxray and, Lu and um, Flareon can't deal with. And Rampados is there to just do damage. I mean, it, it works really nicely and it's really nothing big to it. It's very straightforward. So, yeah, I do believe my primary has Seed <laughs> seed Bomb 2 for a reason, and that is for Quagsires, which actually works really well with this team because my Gorgas don't have any grass move. So anyway, with that long intro, let's actually see how this battle went. Now, it should be known that it actually became a pretty long game. Uh, I think we hit it off at 30, 30 turns here, which is incredible. So anyway, he's gonna show up with Torterra, which is okay. Uh, we can deal with that somewhat because we are dealing. I start with, of course, Grissnir, of course, my prime ape. And you just can go for a U turn, and that does do a hefty amount of damage, but not as much as I want. I mean, being banded, that is really, really low damage. So, anyway, I'm just gonna go to Dedrick, getting up my stick web since it doesn't have any spinner in his team, which means I can get up that for free. Plus, assuming that he probably will go for. Um, sorry, for his stealth rocks. Now, I could have packed Ice Punch, which I didn't do, which I feel is unfortunate in this situation, because there is really no way I can stop this Torterra outside of bringing my, of course, Flareon, which I really can't bring safely. Now, I could have presumed, of course, the Stealth Rock would have come and went from that way anyway, but I didn't see a situation where I could pull that off. Now, it goes for Earthquake here, and it doesn't do a whole lot, showing, of course, that it is extremely defensive. Like I said, the Primate is banded, so... It, that that U-turn did it more did more than 50% is beyond me. Uh, so I'm just gonna go for, like I said, they're toxic. And this is probably my only real response to it, to force it to whittle it down. Because with Protect and stuff like that, I can kind of avoid this guy off. Um, I don't do, like, enough damage with Nightshade, Protect, and Toxic. I should be able to stall it out or be in treat KO'd, by the way, of course, from the possible Earthquake, which would have been unfortunate. But that's my general only response here. Um, now, I do actually switch out, trying to preserve it. Uh, I was feeling that it could potentially switch out too. So I'm gonna go to the monster that is Gorgeist. And just in general, like, Gorgeist really, really, really was my safer switch in. If it's the same with Torterra, I could have dealt with it also. So I go to Balrog, the Gorgeist, and uh, I'm gonna Frisk the Shesto. Now, this should probably have been my warning. Because the thing is here, with Shestoberry, it most likely is, of course, uh, Resto. And he's gonna show him an enemy flux with, of course, his hidden ability plus, which means it get a cosmic power boost, and I miss the Willow, which is not good, not good at all. Now, he will keep going for that magnetic flux, that's fine. I have nothing to um, do against. I could have switched out the flare on here and then, but didn't do it. I go for the Willow to get the residual damage, because I really don't wanna bring my. Flareon in a situation where he could get hurt. Now, I will decide here, of course, to bring the monsters that is Flareon. But the issue here is that I'm not sure if Flavius can take it out. But I'm gonna basically, you know, bring it all I got and really, really hope that a miracle does kick in. Now, like I said, 
that cosmic power boost that he gets from Mega Flux is incredibly dangerous. So this adamant, fully powered 130 base Flareon, that's the next drill hit people, are going to break apart this mon. Now I'm not sure if that was a roll or not, but we kill it without even having to worry about a crit. It just goes down. Which was awesome. I mean, I rarely see Flareon doing anything good, and this was probably one of the few times where it did just do right. Now he'll go for his subway here, of course, the Waylord, and I'm not gonna lie, I was sure I was gonna outspeed this one and go for a facade. Even though I knew it probably was Scarf. Now the thing is, even with the Scarf, it is faster because I am adamant and not jolly. And that really, really, really sucked. Now the perk here is that even though it is faster, it is not faster than Grisnir, even if it is Scarf right now, because obviously it has now a neutral speed, which means my primate, which is, I do believe, Jolly, a Jolly Bandit, is just a monster in this kind of situation, so I do force it out. The unfortunate part is that I'm gonna showcase I have Seed Bomb. I thought the Seed Bomb was better in case the Waylord does survive it anyway, and I don't want to take a big risk on it. There is just no way that would make it viable, and I am still making dinner, just if you guys hear sound. <coughs> La da 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 da. I wish I could stop the video, but I can't. Sorry about this. La da 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 da. Has anything happened? Yeah. Anyway, I am forced to go back to the gore guys. <laughs> I can't believe I recorded this as I make food, I'm sorry. And that was, of course, a safer play. Now, as you guys saw, the seed bomb did not do a whole lot to Torterra. It did actually less than close combat. Obviously, be unstabbed and all. But anyway, we're now in a situation where I either go for Synthesis or I try to kill him. But fearing that he could probably try to suck this guy off or switch out, I felt that probably it's better that I settle for the obvious play and go for Synthesis. Now the bad part about this is that he just do the same. And it's, like I said, it's kind of hard for me to kill this Torterra. It really is. The sheer amount of bulk and not having an ice move makes this guy a big deal for me to take out. But, luckily for me though, he will switch out here. I mean, he didn't really have a lot of options here. He obviously would get stalled out by this, so I thought that was the right play to make. And I do believe I go for a Willow here predicting the switch. The thing is, he goes to this thing, and this thing can deal with me. Like, there is really nothing I can do to it. And of course, being that it packs um, Dark type moves means it can hit me super effectively. While it wouldn't hurt me a whole lot, it still is a thing. Because I have only Shadow Sneak, and Shadow Sneak will not touch this guy, there is no way. So I have to switch out, and I'm gonna decide to go to my Dead Rake, of course, Ariados. Because I really don't have any further use for it anyway. And I can probably scout out, it's possible that it has uh, Rain Dance. So I thought that, you know, I have Protect and stuff like that, and turn the tides here by actually stalling out with Protect. Which is nice, not gonna lie, like, that's the best play I got. So anyway, I go for Nightshade, and that forces down a whole lot. Well, he goes for knockout, which is okay actually, it is really okay. And fearing that since he has the prankster, he's gonna go for rain dance now, I'm just gonna go for protect. I really wanna stay in, I don't wanna give him that momentum, there's no way I gotta let him off the hook. But he just goes for a U-turn. So I did not see that one coming, and fearing that he probably gone for a U-turn rain dance here anyway, I'm gonna go for a second protect. Which is awesome because, believe it or not, he goes for air encore instead this time, would have been locked me into protect. But I uh, pull a double, which is awesome and very, very, very weird. So he's gonna go for the bomb, and yeah, there is nothing I can do here. He's gonna go for rain dance. I can't stop him. There is no way. And uh, while that does sucks, it still is that, like I said before, the general idea was to actually make sure that I had this mon in, because all I really need is to make sure that I waste his uh, rain turns. And. Um, yeah, that's about the size of things. I gotta go for play there, and really, really hope for the best. Now, here's the thing, I'm not sure I can take a bolt switch, but I will stay anyway. I do believe I went for a second... No, I went for Toxic here, so at least whatever comes in is on a timer, because that's the only play I have here. Other than that, I can't do anything. And he's gonna bring Lord Claw, which of course being Armaldo, and I'm... Like I said before, don't name your Armaldos Arnaldo. Arnaldo is a Spanish name, which I do hate, and... It just flows fluidly with the uh, Armaldo. <laughs> anyway, so I go for the Toxic, obviously, and that's gonna help me a whole lot, not really. Uh, but I hope that I can stay in here, I'm gonna go for Protect. 
for one reason. Like I said, we are stalling for turns here. We're trying to survive. And he's going to showcase, of course, Earthquake, which is just the best. And um, I'm going to try to go for another protect. So I do sadly fail, and my Oriolas will fall. But man, he did pick up a fight there, didn't he? He really made sure that there was at least a few as few turns as possible against this, and I think that worked just nicely. So, yeah, against Lord Chloel, my only mod response was Balrog. Now, I didn't know if it had knockoff or Stone Edge. If it had knockoff, it would have stung a lot. So I decided to go for foul play and I followed up with a Shadow Snake if it survives. Now, he goes for Stone Edge, and we do take that really well, even Life of and whatnot. So, that's great. And I go for foul play thinking that would kill him. It does not, but luckily we had, of course, the Toxic Inborn, which was extremely helpful here. And uh, Lower Claw will fall. So right now we're looking really good. Both the um, possible Rain Sweepers are down. And Sa Subway's gonna come, and I have no further use of Gorgeist. I mean, he only got Torterra left and uh, Electrode. I can deal with them somewhat, and I'm actually better off going for Shadow Snake here and make sure that this Water Spout isn't a destructive move here. Which, of course, he goes for Shadow Snake instead. Uh, I could possibly have lived a water spout there, but highly unlikely. Uh, but Ice Beam was a superior choice, and I really don't have any good switchings for a possible uh, um, Ice Beam anyway. So, I go to Grisnir, knowing here that he probably will switch into uh, either Electrode or his uh, Torterra. So, I go for close combat, because that's the strongest move I got, and in all honesty, uh, I'd rather catch the um, Waylord in the last situation because Waylord will be the last mod to fall if that match on counter for issue. Now, Close Combat will now destroy Torterra, doing more than those 50 ish percent did first time. So, it did way more this time for some reason. So, kind of weird mid max going, I guess. And Rain will finally stop, which is unfortunate because that means, of course, I can set it up again. And I have really no reason of doing anything else here but staying in. But I was thinking, hmm. If I could bring Luxray here and face him off, that would probably be way cooler. So I decided to pull that off. So I gotta go to Kisik, of course, being my Luxray. Because I walled this uh, Electro to some extent. And in all honesty, I really wanted to showcase that I have Electro too, or Luxray. <clears throat> and of course, that worked in my favor. So, of course, the Toxic Gore will kick in. So, in second mod with Toxic Gore, and it goes for Thunder. Now that's a resistant hit, and of course, Electro doesn't have the mightiest special attack. So that's just about no open if a saw will destroy, of course, this poor Electro. But here's the thing. With Scarf in mind, I am not able to outspeed this um, Waylord. There is no way, sadly, because I am, like, like I said previously, I am adamant and not jolly on my powerhouse set. So with Scarf and, of course, the recital of the... Um, negative stats that it gets, it actually still is faster than uh, my sweeper, which is real unfortunate, but at the same time, like I said, Prime Ape solves the rest, it just, it holds up, it really, really does, and uh, Grisner just gonna come in here and just wrap things up, and uh, I wasn't entirely sure that uh, Close Count would kill it, so the cycle for a seed bomb, and that's a dead Waylord. So, yeah, we do win this game 2-0, but had not my, um, sorry, had not, of course, my Prime have killed that Waylord, the only one I had left was Ramper Doss, and he was not going to outspeed him either. There was just no way. So Richard actually got us by the balls there. Um, now, we do win, like I said, 2-0, and uh, there were a few situations there where I was very lucky. Um, just going to... Uh, and we're a few situations, like I said, we were lucky. The player on killed, of course, his magnetic flux, clink clank, was just wow. And just in all honesty, I mean, I had a very, very powerful team, and he could actually deal with it rather nicely. Rain really made sure that uh, he could, uh, or rather, his Waylord made sure that I couldn't uh, touch him. Like, I couldn't outspeed it, so it just destroyed me instead. So, awesome stuff, and also, it's always a pleasure battling Richard, and if everybody's been watching, of course, make sure to leave a like, and if you're new to the channel, don't subscribe. And um, I should give you an honest uh, opinion, or I want an honest opinion. Does these videos work for you guys, or do you want me to do go out all the way? Because if that's the case, like, I, I can do more videos if I do them like this, but they are not as good, which is, I feel, are a bit unfortunate. But anyway, guys, you know, post out what you think about that, and I'll keep that in mind. So everybody, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next video. Until then, take care. Bye.